Whoa, it's Woolsey, and welcome back to another Thoughts On video. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, partially to give myself a little break from writing, yet again, but also to focus on the requests I've received as a moderator so far. I've been tied up with that and enjoying it a lot, but I'm super stoked to be bringing out another Thoughts On video. Today, it's focused on Layak, decorated by Enzo, with gameplay made by Ilrel and Marwick, two iconic creators in the layout scene who are praised very often for their creative sync and flow. Since I'm a bit of a plum when it comes to playing skill, I've been in contact with my good friend Moosh to give an opinion of the gameplay. Moosh reports that it's very fun overall, with an annoying duel at 50% that feels a little bit unbalanced compared to the slow gameplay at the end. Jakob Nugget, another skilled player you should check out, tweeted that this is barely an extreme demon and that there are lots of harder demons that are rated insane, like Hypersonic. Anyway, in Layak, Enzo fuses effects, art and design into one level. The name Layak refers to a person who practices black magic, and this theme is conveyed pretty well in the level, using this fusion to its fullest. In my opinion, a theme is always best executed through the use of art, which is done successfully in the transitions between each part, which are often very smooth, without losing much quality in between. Instead of just using a black screen, the creators have incorporated gameplay in between. The Enzor is decorated in a slightly different style, which often works very well to break the aesthetic in a subtle way and this makes the level less stale and more interesting since there are a bunch more ideas used and this strengthens the theme greatly. It's made so much more memorable through this and the artistic touches to the block design at times that keep it true to the magic theme. To make the gameplay more fair, Enzo shows a glimpse of the upcoming gameplay in between the empty type transitions towards the end using a few undecorated blocks followed by a black screen that hides the blocks being toggled on. I like this because although it may seem a little awkward to include default blocks, they're quite transparent and work well as they aren't distracting from the other visuals in the level. At the edges of the drops display, there are some nice pulsing decorations like chains and thin glow that intensify the different sections in different ways, and overall, I think that the variation in the level is absurd since there are so many different pieces of artwork and effects to accompany each design alongside a blending screen above the level, which brings all the colours together very nicely. When it's bright, it saturates the glow and makes it more prevalent, and this is effective when the screen pulses on the beat. This level uses a very eye-catching colour scheme all the way through, of red and the colours around it on the colour wheel. Yellow, orange, red and pink all go together very well, especially when they pulse in and out of each other. For example, a pulse from pink to yellow will cycle through the rest of the colours on display, which ties it all together very well, and it makes the level very consistent all the way through, even though there's a wide variety of designs and effects, which is awesome. The level is very dynamic. As I said earlier, there's lots of changing visuals such as the borders on the sides, but also on the ground in certain areas, which creates sort of an unstable feel which fits perfectly with the whole theme because the level just looks absolutely crazy in both the detail and the dynamics and this is best seen in the first ship section before the drop but the build up kinda ruins this the speed and easings on the movements between the ship and the spammy black orb section just don't really match and compared to the rest of the transitions in the level being built in this one feels very random and I'm unsure whether the title screen ties in the colour scheme here is broken up and the detail is lacking the fact that the level uses no white elsewhere just makes this title look very out of place, although it is redeemed by the sink right after it, when the spikes appear with a simple toggle trigger or alpha trigger, without fade time. It kinda brings back the feel of the level straight away, so the build up isn't too much of a problem in this sense. The level has some fantastic atmosphere all the way through, as the background is often dark and contrasts nicely to the blocks, which isn't too harsh because of the glow usage, and also due to the low opacity coverage of any empty space surrounding the block design. The contrast is eased well, and it just works all together very well to keep the mysterious vibe it's got going on. It's very progressive too, even though it ends on a calmer note. The level gets more and more intense and packed with visuals as it goes on, but then this is perfectly reduced at the end to make it come back full circle, and works with the plinky plunky sound of the song to make it intense without many effects. I think the colour purple is brought in very nicely, as it is quite a sinister colour to round off such an eerie level. The end screen is pretty solid too. Unlike the build up, I think this fits in very well with the level, as it directly follows the colour and format of the wave to end it whereas the beginning just completely contrasts to the build-up. 
I think Enzo, Ilrel and Marwek have done a very good job and have made a very cohesive, action-packed level with lots of varied dynamics to spice it up and make it very memorable. Thanks for watching this Thoughts On episode. I'm not quite sure what's next since the game's been a little bit quiet at the moment. I'm gonna try to keep putting out DM request videos every two days, so stay tuned, like and subscribe. Have a good day.